Hello, Jason. Hi, Ed. How are you going? Good, thanks. That's Is good. Working? Yes. We got we got one of these each. Um, so, Jason, you, as I say, are director uh, Queensland Online. Uh, Queensland Online is part of Smart Service Queensland. Yep. Uh, and I think of Smart Service Queensland as sort of the front door to Queensland government. Yeah. Um, you run uh, multiple channels there. So there's the digital channel. Uh, you've uh, run the call centre um, uh, for people to access uh, over the phone. And there's also a whole bunch of uh, in-person service centres across, spread across Queensland. So that multi-channel sort of access, I suppose, is really important to the Queensland government strategy? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's something that Queensland government takes very seriously. You know, Smart Service Queensland is very well positioned. As you said, we've got call centres, um, customer service in person, um, counter services, we call it, and we've got our digital capability. And I think um, what we do that's probably a little different to general retail or um, other customer service streams is we don't push use those other channels to push to our digital to save money. We actually ensure that each of these channels um, have a, a capability of first point of contact resolution um, because we're, we're government, you know, we have a responsibility. Um, we have an all-inclusive target audience, mm -hmm. you know, from birth to, to the ultimate end. Um, and everything in between and, you know, not everyone's comfortable with digital, as you know. So finding the, comfort uh, the most comfortable point of interaction for the customer is what we strive for. Yep. Fantastic. And, and that sort of customer centricity goes, uh, as you say, you don't push everyone into that digital realm, but certainly uh, Queensland Online, you're responsible for the qld.gov.au sort of main landing point for, for Queensland Government. That itself is sort of structured, um, it's referred to as a franchise model, so yep. information's drawn in from the various departments and agencies. You're not expecting a citizen to understand the makeup of government and its complexities. Yeah. Um, that that citizen-centric view is really important. Absolutely. I think we learnt a long time ago, um, people don't come to government websites for entertainment purposes. Really? Okay. <laughs> Funnily enough, uh, they usually come infrequently, uh, but for a specific purpose. Yeah. Uh, so our goal is to make that as easy uh, interaction as possible. Um, and to do that, we, we shouldn't expect them to know how government is structured and mm. which department is responsible for which service or part of a service. And, and that's what we have a lot of is, you know, you pay your rego, you're, you're paying some tax to the Queensland Revenue Office, you're paying some uh, maintenance to TMR, you're doing something else over here. Customers shouldn't need to know that. So this franchised user-centric approach, the qld.gov.au is our front door. Um, it's built in a way that relates to customers and the journeys, um, but it's also using language that they should be relating to. Now, we can always do better, and we always strive to do better, but that's the goal. Um, as you know, government language can be quite confusing and, and misleading if you're not working in government, so that's where we're heading. Beautiful. So it's a strong strategy being rolled out um, within Queensland government and, and as you say, that citizen centricity is built in. Uh, within government, you've got quite a lot of time, usually for planning, uh, getting things right. Um, there's a big focus on security, accessibility, uh, getting the right tools uh, there, the right sign-offs are done. Uh, and then along comes COVID, uh, and the world yeah. changes, uh, and you're expected to, to do everything tomorrow. Um, yeah, so that's a, a huge impact, but I think your team has uh, responded so admirably. So can you just share a little bit of, of that experience? Yeah, I'm, I, we're very lucky. We had an amazing team, have an amazing team. Um, and COVID certainly changed things around and, and put things on its head. Uh, we went from, as you said, all the time in the world, in a, in a manner of speaking, as far as risk profile and, you know, ticking all the boxes and navigating the red tape. COVID, there was no appetite for that. And it was immediate. We had Queensland police legis uh, enforcing legislation that Queensland Health were responsible for under a Health Direction Act. Um, obviously, Queensland Health go through mock processes and, and they have all their plans in pr place, but until you're actually in these things and understanding how um, citizens react and society reacts, 
it, it was a difficult situation. So the way we worked had to change um, and we became far more reactive, but our risk appetite changed dramatically to meet that mm -hmm. as well. Um, and and there were, it was amazingly challenging, mm. but there were so many great outcomes as a result mm. of that. Um, yeah. mm. I'd like to pick that up actually, because I know um, a, a number of things, you know, there's the COVID site itself that was put up, the informational site, a number of different services were required. Uh, one in particular was the border pass um, system yeah. that was put up, and I know um, a, a huge effort from your team, from the vendors supporting you, um, complex sort of technology integrations were required, and again, in a very short amount of time. So mm. could you just give us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it was an extremely short amount of time. I was only talking to Varney, one of our superstars, uh, this morning, actually, and what she said she took away from that was... Um, what she remembers is looking at the news and seeing hours, if not days, of waiting at borders for people to cross. Yeah. Um, and, and it was kind of at that point that we were approached to go, what can, what can you guys do to help? Now, we're, to keep it in mind, our day-to-day -day is not full-on development. Um, we've got development capability, but we usually coordinate agencies to do their own development. But our team were able to step up and kind of look through our bag of tricks and uh, call upon the great relationships of our vendors like Squiz um, and uh, use Squiz platform but also some Form IO mm -hmm. uh, capability and uh, pull together a, a system <laughs> that not only was easy to use and easy to navigate for the customer yep. but could change rapidly hourly if required to meet the ever-evolving legislation and new laws that were coming into place around keeping Queensland safe. Mm, mm. Um, it was quite challenging. And, and quite a, I mean, amazing uptake from uh, some of the quotes, uh, the figures you'd, you'd quoted yeah, previously. Ab absolutely. I, I think one of our high watermarks fairly early on the piece was 50,000 applications in an hour. Yeah. Um, we were doing multiple releases a week at points, and these releases would happen at 1am because, you know, that's when it was decided to be the best time to coordinate between daylight savings in Queensland and New South Wales and all of that. But, um, yeah, we, we would see thousands of applications within minutes of doing a new border release because you'd have industry sitting there yeah. waiting trucks waiting at the border going, well, we need to get freight across. The new rules come in in an hour. Mm. They're sitting there with their iPads yeah. in their trucks, filling in these things as we hit the button. Pretty amazing. So it's incredible. It, it's really meaningful work, wasn't it? I mean, it, um, and I think you know, just even talking to, to customers today and the reaction from, from the teams, there's a, there's a general theme here in terms of, of what people were, were able to achieve and the impact that we were having um, on the broader community at large. Mm. And, um, and really team, teams feeling like they're doing the best work of their lives in, in some respects uh, during that time. How did that play out with your team? Absolutely. Um, I certainly personally feel it's the best work of my life. Um, but it, I think from government point of view, the people we attract generally have a bit of a community spirit yeah. about them. Um, it, it's more than money. And if you have a look at government wages, it's, it's always more than money because we don't get paid what some of the um, you know, private industry can pay, especially in contracting. But I think... Uh, Vani mentioned it best this morning when she said to be to see that border line up to get that call to come up with a solution and within days watching those borders go from two days sitting at a border to a couple of hours after working you know around the clock to do that she said I had a look on the news and I felt extremely rewarded you know so we we do the um, some surveying every year in Queensland Government. It's called Working for Queensland and and it's anonymous surveying but it can it goes down to a team level and in my team in particular um, the the feeling over work component was sitting at 85% during that period and it was understandable like we we're a small team working crazy hours but the the key point to take out was job satisfaction for that exact same period was 95% 
And that was a high watermark. We'd never, ever achieved that before. So there's something to take away from that too. You know, it, it's, it's not necessarily the amount of work, but the type of work and the value of the work. Awesome. Um, I think you've, you've proven what's possible. Um, you've got the technology platforms, uh, vendors, and obviously team that can that can do that. Uh, cut through the red tape uh, that might be in government at times, and, and sign offs and those sorts of things. Um, what next, though? How do you take that forward? Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, well, that's a difficult thing, isn't it? Like, obviously, we've got a whole range of learnings that we um, want to take on board. And there's a whole range of things that we'd love to keep on going. Of course, adrenaline can't be a component of that. <laughs> uh, even though it, it worked really well for us, it, it's not sustainable. But I think making sure that we're working to a, a more appropriate risk appetite, I think BAU for so long, um, it, it kind of gets you into this lull of let's triple check, let's quadruple check, you know, before we can sign things off. Yeah. Um, I think what COVID proved was we can get things out quick. Mm. And if we, if we take a more agile approach, we get things out, we iterate, we, we adapt, we, we adjust as we go along, yeah. it, it reduces risk in a different way and it makes it easier to get to market for our customers who are inevitably waiting for us yeah. at the end of the day. So... Um, there's also workforce planning stuff that we need to revisit as well, um, but that's that's much longer term and more government centric. Excellent. Okay.